crisp, sharp movement. Precision. The greater the discipline, the greater the success. Soldiering is a part of the nation of Islam and it readies all of us to obey the commands of God. Now some will ask, well, why military drill? Because this is what produces the camaraderie. We are one nation, one army, under one commander in chief. So even though we're students, we're soldiers. Even though we're scholars, we're soldiers. Even if we're student ministers or student secretaries, we are soldiers. Everybody in the nation is a soldier. but that the 10,000 fearless men and women would be those of us who would be willing to go into the community and stand between the gangs and to bring about peace and conflict resolution in the communities. And we have a brother, uh, a very uh, dedicated brother, beautiful brother, who serves as our uh, Southern Regional Minister, Brother Abdul Sharif Muhammad, oh, yes. who as soon as he heard Brother Farrakhan's desire right. and his will, went to work and went to Atlanta and established a house that is uh, called the 10,000 Fearless House. Right. Uh, and didn't stop there, but went and uh, with the help of some of the pastors in the community, um, they they came. They now they have a bus, right. uh, and then they didn't stop there. Yeah, no. uh, now they have a car, oh, really? and if you read the uh, latest issue of the Final Call newspaper, there's a beautiful article about the work that Brother Sharif and the brothers and sisters in Atlanta are doing, following the instructions right. of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, the ten thousand fearless is up and running in in Atlanta. Right. Um, but also in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, our brother, student minister, Willie Muhammad, uh, they have established what is called a beef hotline, where if, if a brother or a sister or a group of individuals in New Orleans have a problem or what, what young people call beef with one another, uh, there's a number that they can call and someone on that hotline will be able to take the call and listen to the issue, the concern, uh, whatever may be upsetting or troubling that young brother or sister. And from this past weekend, uh, student minister Willie, uh, in a, a session called the Ministry of Defense, shared with us in attendance that since they established that hotline, they have sat in on 30 of these conflicts and of the 30 that they have sat in on they have been able to bring resolution to 28 of them so last night uh, at our local organizing committee meeting uh, we shared with the brothers and sisters in attendance that we too here in Richmond Virginia are going to establish the 10,000 fearless uh, chapter here in Richmond, Virginia. And for those of you who are interested and want to know more about what it uh, in involves, what it takes to be one of the 10,000 fearless, you can go to www.justiceorelse 
and uh, log on and read about the effort, the implementation of the 10,000 Fearless and your name. Uh, you can register your name, address, and phone number and be one of the 10,000 Fearless. Uh, there were some who, who, who thought that you know, we were going to go into the community as vigilantes and, you know, uh, snatch people up by the collar and what have you. But that's not what this is about. One of the things that Minister Farrakhan said and instructed was that those that do sign up to be a, a part of the 10,000 Fearless must be trained. Right. Because if we go into our communities and we don't have the love of self, love of God, then we're not going to be able to go in and learn and, and serve and love our people. So we're not just going in uh, cockeyed, untrained, unlearned. Uh, there's a process by which you and I will be going into the community. And all you have to do is have a love for your people, love for yourself, and a desire to want to see peace in the black community. Uh, there's not a day that goes by that we do not hear about, read about, or see on TV uh, where some member of our community, uh, you, usually one of our youth, uh, whose lives have been cut short due to the violence that plagues our community. So the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, is one of hope, uh, one of love for our brothers and sisters. And I can't wait here in Richmond, Virginia, for us to get busy right. with the 10,000 Fearless coming soon to a neighborhood near you. <laughs> um, but also one of the things that, just to shift gears a little bit, um, we wanted to talk a little bit more about the instructions, the commands. One of the things that the minister talked about on this past Sunday was that we needed to pool our resources. Right. He touched on some of the work that went into the up with Jesus, down with Santa. Yes, uh, what, what did you think about that? Great move. Mm -hmm. Great call. Um, and great response from our people. Yes. Um, but we haven't finished. Mm -hmm. That was just the beginning. Um, our people must know that we can't depend on no one but ourselves and God. Mm -hmm. And we have the man of God in our midst today instructing us correctly. Mm -hmm. He hasn't failed us, not one time. Uh, but if we choose not to listen to him, then failure will come to us. But we were very, very rewarded for our efforts mm -hmm. because he, our leader made a call. We made a response. And God backed us mm -hmm. because during the holiday seasons from uh, Black Friday, which is the week after Thanksgiving, up until the first the week after, or after right. December uh, 25th, God made the weather warm. Yes, sir. <laughs> you couldn't sell coats that, that yes, time sir. of the year. That's you couldn't right. sell gloves that time of the mm -hmm. year. They were stockpiled with scarves and mm -hmm. boots and whatnot mm -hmm. that you used. For winter. For winter. Mm -hmm. And they were stuck. We didn't go out shopping. We kept mm -hmm. our money in our pocket like our minister asked us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he told us, find a black business. Mm -hmm. If you have to go a little further out, mm -hmm. that's okay. Let's start shopping and spending with one another so we can keep our money in our pocket. The... Um, people put out a poll and they, you know that the money only stays in our community for six hours. Six hours. But in other communities, the money circulates Days. at least three weeks, mm -hmm. at the least. We have to learn how to do this. Uh, we got black owned businesses. We got to start circulating. We got to start learning how to pool our resources come together and build those things that we need for ourselves mm -hmm. or we're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. the, our open enemy do not feel that they owe us anything. They do not feel that they have to keep carrying us and carrying us and carrying us like dead weight. In the scriptures, God said, come out of her, my mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and be not partakers of her sins. 
for her sins have reached unto heaven. Mm -hmm. Our sins and the sins of our open enemy has reached unto heaven, mm -hmm. has reached unto the higher realm of God and his Christ. And they're angry, mm -hmm. not only with our enemy, but with us because we're slow of foot mm -hmm. to do what we should be doing for ourselves. You know, Brother Mike, it's interesting you say that because on Thursday, <laughs> the minister talked about uh, insubordination and how we as a people have been insubordinate to the instructions that God has already given us. Right. That which we're talking about tonight, that which the minister has been talking about for nearly 60 plus years, right. that which the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us for the 40 years that he was physically among us, right. that which the Savior, Master Farad Muhammad, taught us Right. as early as 1930. Right. These instructions, these commands have been among us for 86 yeah. years now. Yeah. So we have been insubordinate up to this point. Right. But as the minister shared with us on Thursday, our, insubordinate, our insubordination will no longer be tolerated. Right. And as you have said, we will pay a price for our disobedience. Right and our slackness and our inability to hear and obey and follow out and follow through the instructions that are coming to us now. The time is too serious. We, we spoke or you spoke earlier about what is Savior's Day. I'd like to read uh, an excerpt from the final call. Uh, we know what Savior's Day is but I'd also, also like to read to us uh, the Savior, his mission, and their servant in our midst. The Savior being Master Fard Muhammad right. and his servant, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Many ask, well, you know, we hear a lot about Fard Muhammad. Well, who is Master Fard Muhammad? You know, we never met him. You know, we weren't, we weren't around in 1930 in Detroit, Michigan, uh, when he came here from the holy city of Mecca. And many wonder and ask the question, well, who is he? Well, I'd like to read a few words. Uh, Master Fahd Muhammad, the founder of the Nation of Islam, was born on February 26, 1877. Savior's Day, an annual Nation of Islam celebration, commemorates his birth. On July 4th, the day of America's independence celebration, a wise master came to America from the holy city of Mecca. He revealed himself publicly for the first time in 1930. He announced the beginning of his mission which was to restore and to resurrect his lost and found people who were identified as the original members of the tribe of Shabazz from the lost nation of Asia. The lost people of the original nation in the wilderness of North America were captured, exploited, and dehumanized to serve to serve as slaves for over three centuries. His mission was to teach the downtrodden and defenseless black people a thorough knowledge of God and of themselves and to put them on the road to self-independence with a superior culture and higher civilization than they had previously experienced. He taught us the ways of love and peace of truth and beauty. We are being led into the path of a new spiritual culture and civilization of complete harmony and peace, one of refinement in the pursuit of happiness and eternal joy in the supreme knowledge of God and the science of everything in life. In 1931, mas the, the, the master was preaching this great truth of salvation when he met a man named Elijah Poole in Detroit, Michigan. He taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the profound secret wisdom of the reality of God, which included the hidden knowledge 
of the original people who were the first founders of civilization of the planet and who had a full knowledge of the universal order of things from the beginning of the divine creation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad identified the master as being the answer to the one that the world had been expecting for the past 2,000 years under the names Messiah, the second coming of Jesus, the Christ, Jehovah, God, and the Son of Man. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked him to identify himself, he replied he was the Mahdi. He signed his name in 1933 as Master Wallace Fard Muhammad to express the meaning of the one God who comes in the early morning, dawn of the new millennium to lay the base for a new world order of peace and righteousness on the foundation of truth and justice to put down tyrants and to change the world into a heaven on earth. For me, this past weekend, the thought that kept going through my mind was, this is heaven. Yeah. This is heaven. We have to, as believers, as followers of Master Fard Muhammad, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and our beloved brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we have to transform human life. It's a tall task, it's a hard task. As a matter of fact, we were told by Minister Farrakhan that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the job he was given by Master Fard Muhammad was the hardest job right. ever given to any man. To take a people who are dead mentally, spiritually, socially, economically, politically, and to raise that people into consciousness. This is the time of the resurrection, not physically, right. but spiritually, right. where those who have slept, those who have been in the graves for 6,000 years, right. this great spiritual awakening is taking place right now on our planet. And the heaven that we have been taught that we would experience when we were dead, when we were gone, uh, a heaven uh, up in the clouds somewhere out there in the universe, that heaven which is a condition of the mind, right. uh, a condition, a reality right here on earth, has to be brought to the masses of the people. When you look at humanity today, man has fallen. But those of us who have been blessed, not because of anything that we did, but as Jesus said, I thank thee, Father in heaven and earth, that thou has hidden this knowledge from the wise right. Right. and revealed it to the babes, the yeah. foolish, whom the, world can deem, whom the world considers to be the, the, the foolish of the planet. Right. But we have been blessed. We are the beneficiaries of a supreme knowledge, a supreme wisdom. And it is not a knowledge or a wisdom that we walk around with our chest puffed out uh, because we've been given it uh, for the benefit of ourselves. But to go back and to go out among our people and to share with them that which has been given to us. What are your thoughts about that? Hmm. Well, first of all, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that we are of the righteous. Of meaning a part mm -hmm. or has a place with. He didn't say we were the righteous. <laughs> he said we are <laughs> of the righteous. Based upon how we Based live. Based upon now. how we live mm -hmm. and accept his instructions. We are that material that God wants and can use. Mm -hmm. Allah says in the scriptures that I did not try you with silver and gold. Yes. But I tried you out of the furnace of affliction. Fire. Huh? Fire. Furnace. Meaning all of the hell we went through. Yes. 
all of the beatings, all of the dogs being sicked on us, all of the water holes by the bull corners, all of the torture, all of the hangings, mm -hmm. and all of those things that our women went through through slavery or the process of slavery, mm -hmm. we have survived. No other people can say that. And it speaks of, of us in the scripture because God promised us in the scriptures. He's speaking to Abraham. And he says, no of a sure to Abraham that your seed will be in a land that is not their own. Mm -hmm. And they shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Go ahead. No one has been in bondage or serving no other mm -hmm. people for 400 years but the black man and one, woman in North America. Mm -hmm. So God has used us has use for us because we survived that mm -hmm. and are still surviving that with these police killings present and, day. and yes. this present day torture we are going through. Mm -hmm. So God is using us to bring us out of something to make Good heaven point. on earth. Good point. If our people can just look at us, we're not better than you. Our best Help is in the streets. Still in the streets. We're That's going right. to. We're coming to get we're you. We're coming to get you. We're coming to get you. But you got to be ready and willing to be gotten. We're not making you other than what you are. You mm -hmm. are a Muslim by nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you call yourself a Christian. I'm a Christian too. But a Christian is one who's crystallizing the oneness of Christ. There's a work that has to be done. Christ was in the streets, in the highways and byways. Right. If you are a Christian, come on with us mm -hmm. and get in the streets, in the yes, highways yes. and byways, and let's get our people, man. There you go. That's what we got to do. Beautifully put, Brother Mike. I um, want to also inform our viewing audience that on tomorrow night uh, at Virginia Union University, uh, one of the greatest HBCUs in America, oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to have a town hall meeting uh, at 7 o'clock, and this is a follow-up from 10-10-15. We had a beautiful town hall meeting there, one of six that we had leading up to 10-10-15. And it was so productive and so inspiring that we got a call from some of the students a few days ago who wanted us to come back, reconvene. And the theme of tomorrow night's town hall meeting is uh, what now? Uh, right. There are many who want to mm -hmm. know uh, since we've right. been to Washington, right. uh, we, we went and heard the minister, the Alma Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, the message was beautiful. We're back now. We're, we're still on fire. We're lit up. Where do we go from here? And this is our young people. Yes, sir. So tomorrow night we're going to be talking about some of that which uh, we did leading up to the march some of the initiatives, the hard work that is going on right now in the communities and how those of you who are at home uh, can be a part of it, whether it's the 10,000 Fearless, whether it's the educational initiative, one of the things that the minister talked about on this past Sunday, one of the instructions and commands was that we have to change the educational system. There has to be a national educational system for us as a people right. that this present educational system which is at its core mm -hmm. rooted in white supremacy right. that ignores for the most part the contributions of the blacks the Hispanics the Latinos the Native Americans right. who were here tens and hundreds of thousands of years before the Europeans came here to North America. But this educational system uh, has run its course. Right. And in truth, it never really served the purpose that it was intended to for us as a people. Right. So the minister said one of the instructions that we received and commands is that we're going to uh, uh, be involved in the changing of the educational curriculum right. where we're concerned as black people that our children have to have a thorough and complete knowledge of self. Right. That's right. Not just going back to Black History Month, not just going back to slavery. And 
having our young people, myself included, I remember I came through the Baltimore City public school system, to think that our origins started in slavery. Right. But our origins go all the way back 76 trillion yeah. years, right. and that we have to be taught a thorough knowledge of self, where we came from, how we got here, and where we're going from here. In a couple of minutes, we're going to see a, a, a brief clip from uh, 1010 Justice or Else, where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke on the mall in Washington, D.C. Before we go to that, Brother Mike, what else did you take from Sunday's lecture? Well, the minister is instructing us that we have to establish nine ministries mm -hmm. that's important to establishing our government. Mm -hmm. um, if I could, I want to just sure. share um, with the viewing audience and the listening audience um, just what these nine ministries are. Um, we have um, spiritual development, because we need to be developed spiritually. We have agriculture, because mm -hmm. we need to start eating healthy foods and stop eating this denatured food that our enemy mm -hmm. is feeding us. Mm -hmm. When they're showing us constantly on the internet what they're feeding us, mm. which is the, these chicken nuggets, I'm just one example. <laughs> these chicken nuggets that you're eating at McDonald's, you're eating chicken nuggets, all right, but they, are taking baby chickens and putting them in a grinder alive mm -hmm. and grinding them up and then putting whatever batter they choose to put on them. Yeah, I was going to say it's a lot of just batter. Right. Yeah. And they're feeding this to our people. Mm -hmm. This is, and they just had a few, I think last summer, dealing with Kentucky fried chicken, where there was a research done with that's not chicken that they're giving to people. Wow. They give you something that tastes like that. See, we're dealing with mad scientists, brothers and sisters. I was, I was told a few years ago that even the French fries are not potatoes. That's actually batter. That's batter. Yeah. yeah. Just, and it's, it's preserved with a, a certain type of sugar, an unsweetened sugar. Mm -hmm. That's what's on, those, on the fries to keep them preserved. And then we intake that garbage in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Then we're sick. Then we got to go to his brother for medicine. Then we got to go to his his brother for the Okay. Then we got to go to his brother to the emergency room. See, it's all in the game. Okay. Okay. Let me finish these um, nine ministers real quick. Education, which we just spoke on. Information. We must have information to know. Health. Trade and commerce. We have a caller. Yes, sir. Thank you for calling. You're on. Hey, yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, I called about um, how we're being poisoned as the uh, people in the garbage and what color you are. Uh, for example, there's a um, uh, tea out of green tea out that they say is if you open up some of it, they found that some of it, if you open up the bags, there are maggots in there. So can you relate that to, um, uh, what the, uh, Oliver Elijah Muhammad taught about how to live, how to eat to live, please? Yes, yeah. thank you, caller. Um, I think it's very interesting that she just said that how we're being poisoned mm -hmm. across color lines. It doesn't right. matter doesn't if you're black, matter. white, brown, red, or yellow. Uh, we're all eating this same, same garbage, garbage. Right. and how it's, it's not good for us. Uh, we do know that the Honorable Muhammad taught us in both of his books, How to Eat to Live and How to Eat to Live One and Two, that we should only eat one meal per day and that you know, we're actually digging our graves with our own mouths, eating all times of the day, eating, as you said, this food that has been denatured. Um, but Carlo, to answer your question, uh, we do have two books by the Ahmed Elijah Muhammad uh, entitled How to Eat to Live One and How to Eat to Live Two. 
that lays out what, we sh what foods we should eat and what foods we should stay away from. And much of this processed food, of course, we should stay away from. Uh, thank you for your call. Yes, sir. Uh, one more question. You can call uh, 804 218 0101. Uh, we have a bookstore located at 408 East Main Street. You can call in advance and we can have the books ready for you. They're very inexpensive. I think they're $7 a piece. Uh, and the knowledge and the wisdom contained in those books will last, last you a lifetime. Thank you, Brother. Thank That's you. You're welcome. Well, no, no. uh, we just have a couple of minutes left. Um, we have a special treat as well, though. Uh, but before we close out, we want to invite each and every one of you uh, this on Sunday uh, at 11 a.m to see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan live via webcast for what will be part two of Divine Instructions and Commands for the year 2016. And we're located at 408 East Main Street. Uh, come one, come all. It uh, promises to be a, a great Sunday, a great message, one that we know uh, is greatly needed in the community. Uh, and we also want you to know that we're going to have a, a, a drill, a uh, two-minute video clip from this past Savior's Day drill exhibition. Uh, drill is great. It's yes. beautiful to see oh, yes. the discipline, the unity, um, and the soldiering that we, Minister Farrakhan said, that we're all born soldiers. Mm -hmm. And to see our young people in rhythm, in harmony. Uh, drilling to one voice, one command is beautiful. Closing thoughts. Yep. The experience is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but my closing thoughts is come help us so we can help you and we can help ourselves. Thank you. That's the best closing thoughts I can give us. In closing, once again, thank you. This has been Farrakhan Speaks. May God bless each and every one of you. I salam alaikum. Salam alaikum.